Hello and uh, welcome back. Uh, last video, a few videos back, I showed you my uh, current source from Kidly, the Kidly 224, and I found that one in uh, Canada. Now I have his uh, brother, it is a faulted source, and I found it in uh, Germany, also on eBay, and it is the Kidly 230. And uh, let's have a closer look. So I have here my, my Kidly collection, it is uh, a 192. 195 both dmms this is the um, five and a half and i think this one is even a six and a half you can switch it over and add the extra digits and this is my current source i show a few videos uh, before and this is the faulted source and we're gonna play a little bit uh, with this one today so on the bench um, I have already my multimeter here heating up. It is the Sigland uh, 3065. It's a six and a half digits. I also have the Agilent, the 3440A. They are both heating now for an hour. I will wait another hour. And as you can see, they almost agree up to a few microvolts. So that is uh, okay. I will just leave the uh, heat in. This one's precision is. It is high but not as high as this so i can use this to to calibrate this one as i said it's a second hand i found it on ebay in uh, germany um, it is not only a voltage source but it is pr primarily used is voltage source it can go from 50 micro volts up to 101 volts which is a lot and it is, as they say, a four quadrant. And that means it can do positive 100 volts, negative 100 volts. But also you have the currents, positive and negative. Well, the pos positive makes it an, uh, an current source as well, just like the 220 and the 224. And the uh, negative on that side makes it kind of an electronic load, but only for the values that you can program. So that is uh, two milliamps, 20 milliamps, and 100 milliamps. So as an electronic load, it's not really useful, only for 100. And in those quadrants for the current, it is 20% precise, which is not very precise. So for that, you really need the 220 or the 224, because that one you can set very specific. So its main use is as a voltage source. So here we have it from the front. This would be one millivolt, because it's minus three. And um, if we want to go to one volt, that would be this one volt, 10 volts, 100 volts. So this way you can set all your voltages that you would like. And uh, it is uh, quite accurate. It is 0.05% uh, uh, on most of the values except for the 100 millivolt. There it is 0 0.075. It is uh, programmable, so that means in this case that you can program uh, 100 steps, and in each step you can program what voltage you want it to output, and uh, also how fast the step is uh, interval to the next step. And you can program that from 3 milliseconds up to 1000 seconds. And the uh, time accuracy is also about 0.05%. So even the timing is uh, very precise in this source. I did check a little bit the schematics and the documentations that there is. And it seems to be from early 80s. Uh, I've seen drawings from 81, 82, but also from 90. That's probably an update. And uh, maybe we can see on some of the ICs when they are produced, so we have a little bit of a better idea where it is from. And um, before I start adjusting it or trying to calibrate it or make it worse than it is, uh, let me just show you the back and uh, some light. And I will zoom in and I tell you how we need to connect it. So here it is in the back. It is a bit noisy. We have here external triggers. I think that is probably for the steps. Uh, here is some sort of digital I.O. I think you can remote control here. And here is also the IEEE export. Here we have the outputs and it works because it is voltage. It works with sense wires. So you have two manual wires. 
that go to your device you want to measure and you have the sense wires you put that as close to the point where you want to measure as possible and then it if there is any voltage drop it will be automatically corrected by the sense wires so how does that work well we first just connect the normal the positive and the negative wires and then for the sense i usually pick other colors but they also need to make sense so i have here the darker one that is the sense for the low and here i have the sense for the positive let's turn it around and connect it to the voltage meter so how we connect it? Why well, try first without the sense wires. Don't forget to switch the output to on. Depending on the voltage, if you are working with the high voltage, you probably first want to uh, connect your wires before you uh, switch on the output. But I've set it to upright, and because the sense wires don't see anything, there is no voltage right here. So what I do, I connect also the sense wires and I will connect it as close as possible to the connection where I want to measure. So that actually means I put it in first before I put the other cable in the same here. So I am as close to the multimeter as possible. So that will look like this. First my sense wires and then the wires with the voltage so and here we can just play output on and off yeah it takes a while the sample is a bit slow of the segment um, but its value is okay so if we do, do now one volt we go first to exponent zero enter this should be now 100 volts yeah <laughs> 100 volts 10 volts it is not that much off to be honest after so many years I didn't see a calibration sticker so I don't know when it was calibrated last but what I see now it is not even that bad look at this this is I would say one fault um, 19 volts look at this <laughs> so the first quick test that we did it looks very good i like that uh, i didn't check the current limit by the way but uh, we did some voltages and they were still pretty close to what it should be and uh, well we can have a look inside now well, opening the key list is usually pretty simple because there is only a few screws in the back and to do the top we just have two screws one two and then you can open it carefully that's it okay you look from the top well it has been powered on for an hour and uh, it doesn't feel hot at all but of course it doesn't need to deliver a lot of power but uh, it means the ventilator the one that is noisy uh, it's enough because it is really almost cold um, this is the ieee board and i see some dates here 84 84 so but this is an extra board that you can add later uh, we see here calibrated by inspected by but there is no date it is kind of a engineer number i think i also need to be careful with uh, statics with these devices so i will get my uh, wristband well let me see if we can take this board out so we have a better view and uh, also the cable is then not stuck here over this so we can remove also the cover okay i took the screws out here from the connector there was one screw here the ground wire and then we can just take the module out we place it 
at the side there. Then we can see the big transformer. And uh, just like in the other Kitty devices, there is here a big switch to switch it from 110 to 230. And, uh, but here it's from Germany, so it was already correct here. Now I can remove the cover, and uh, maybe we can find some components to determine its age. Well, it does say lethal voltage is maybe percent. Well, that could be because it can do up to 100 volts. So there probably are some caps that are uh, loaded. So, um, yeah, we need to be aware. All the screws are loose. Let's carefully open this. And some components, some have been on sockets. So maybe there has been a repair or not, I don't know. And uh, let's have a closer look, maybe we, to determine the year. I will try to show you some pictures, uh, close-ups. Uh, here I see 84, and here I see 84. And I see here 84, 84. So I think it's safe to say that it is uh, 1984 or later uh, where this device is from. And here it seems that is the voltage reference. And it is the AD544KH, if I see correct. So that was a look on the inside. Well, before I'm going to calibrate it, or at least try to see uh, if the values are uh, good enough, uh, I want to clean it. And I did see some scratches in the display that I like to polish out, but the display seemed to be glued in or melted in. So I need to find another way that I can polish it with the display still in, without me removing all the the letters that are in the front. It looks like someone has been trying to clean the display, but they used the wrong materials. And maybe if I add the light, it is better to see. See, it is full of scratches. So I need to polish that. But if I look on the inside, the display here, looks like it is melted in. So there is no use to take it apart because we end up with the same. So, and the letters are here and I want to keep that. But if you're going to polish, there is a risk that I will uh, damage it. So I think I put some tape around it and then I will try to polish it. So the cleaning is done, I can properly read the display again. And uh, I will just run it through the calibration. And it's just following the steps, it's very clear. I start at page uh, 33, I think, uh, chapter 5.1. And you just do go through all the steps. Set your multimeter in this setting. Uh, do the certain settings here, adjust that pot, and uh, that's it. So I just put the time lapse and uh, we see what the result will be. Okay, the calibration uh, did work. And uh, it needs to be 19 volts with three zeros. I have here 19 volts with four zeros and now even five zeros. So that works very nicely. You probably saw me switching from the HP to the Sigland. And they both agree with this value. Only the scan speed of the Agilent is a little bit faster, which makes it a little bit uh, easier to adjust. Only in some ranges, the Sigland has a digit extra. And uh, that's why I switch over to the Sigland. And the Sigland is also better to see on camera because the digits are uh, a bit bigger. So uh, that's why I use uh, both. So that's almost unbelievable. Uh, Keatley really made some quality products in that time. And I only can guess what it have cost uh, in that time. It's almost 40 years old and it only needed a little bit adjustment and that's it. 
and it is way above spec because I have here my three zeros and look at it I have even five sometimes it is really really cool thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time